Hi, I'm Will. Uh, we're here at the Modernist Cuisine Kitchens in Bellevue, Washington with Maxime Belay. Max, it's so good to see you again. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm so glad you can make it. You have prepared an amazing array of food here for us. A little feast. A, a, a tiny feast for 11 o'clock in the morning. That's right. Uh, let's just jump right into it and, sure. and talk about this, this first dish. Yes, sir. So this is a, a, the, one of the first courses we serve at our, our very big feasts, our, okay. our 30 course dinners. And it's an, it's an elote. So an elote is uh, based on the elote, that Mexican street food, which is roasted corn on the cob, basically with butter, mayonnaise, cotija cheese, lime, cilantro. Because it's usually on a stick, right? Usually on a stick. And it's you know some late, late night food with a really good beer. It's just really satisfying. And we wanted to like concentrate that flavor by using some of the technology that we had uh, available to us mm -hmm. and also highlight some of the modernist ingredients that uh, like insorbit uh, tapioca maltodextrin and and show why some of these ingredients some of these technologies really make sense in interpreting a classic dish so this is a this is not this is elevating kind of more common food De definitely this is this is one of the modernist one of the modernist fundamentals right? fundamentals this is one of those principles where we just want to refine and concentrate and and, and give you so much in a small package that you're satisfied with with, with this beautiful little you know Burst of intensity. So you're going to make a spoonful that's going to blow me away. I, I certainly hope so. Oh, I, you tell I'm me. I'm excited. So, so basically, the, there's uh, well, let's see, let's count. There's about eight components. Okay. And so we have the freeze dried corn that we freeze, that we, as I showed you in the freeze dryer. Okay. Uh, we've made our freeze dried corn. And that freeze dryer just reduces pressure, and it, it reduces pressure. So it's under vacuum, and so you're actually uh, uh, sublimating the the liquid from the uh, the the solids. So you never get back to a, a, a fluid state. Okay. It goes from a, a, a frozen state to a gas state. Oh, okay. So you put this started out as frozen corn. It was frozen corn, and then uh, and so that's the the, so the, the freeze dried process uh, is is sublimation, where you're removing that water without ever uh, compromising the structure of the uh, ingredients. Okay. And you're also preserving a lot of the subtleties, all the sweetness and the and the and the various flavors and and, nutri and the, the nutrition. Fantastic. Actually, uh, it's because it's under vacuum and it's so it's, it doesn't you, reach out in the water. It's protected. Very cool. Uh, so okay. Then, yeah. So we have this freeze dried corn. And then we have this powder. So this is a powder uh, which is mostly brown butter, surprisingly. And it's one of those uh, really fun modern ingredients called ensorbit. So okay, this is the tapioca. This is the, the tapioca maltodextrin. Okay. And uh, what it does is it can absorb up to uh, equal weight, it's equal weight in, in uh, oil. Oh, uh, this, okay. Now, uh, a tapioca maltodextrin by itself weighs nothing. That's you can put a whole bowl full on a, on a scale and it's like, 30 grams. You know, it's kind of crazy when you think about it. And then you whisk in the, so in this case, we whisk in brown butter, mm -hmm. whisk in olive oil, you can whisk in uh, any fat you, you want. So the texture will vary depending on how, um, uh, uh, you know, thick the fat is or, or what temperature. So it'll is solidify the, the fat or whatever fat you put, whether it's it, olive oil it, or exactly, butter or, exactly, or whatever. Exactly. Okay. How saturated it is, it will, will affect the texture. And uh, this is a, a lime powder, so we wanted to. The, the whole principle is of this is that it's a dry snack. Okay. So we don't want to hydrate it. We don't want to put to moisten it and, and lose the crunch, the intensity uh, of any of the flavors. It, it just has to be that, that perfect, you know, uh, uh, you know, balance of those dry textures. Changing the texture, but not the flavors. Exactly. Cool. So we have this lime powder, which is actually a little bit more insorbit, some lime essential oil, and some citric acid. Oh, okay, That's so... It's a nice tartness. Seems really straightforward. Really bright. So again, using a, a modern ingredient like citric acid, where, where an isolated, uh, pure acids are amazing. So citric acid, malic acid, tartaric acid. Malic acid is from uh, um, grapes, tartaric acid from apples, and it's just... Each one has its you know, very particular uh, highlighting quality. It's the thing that you pick up when you're tasting the, it's, it's exactly. the essence of that flavor. It's the essence of that flavor. It's, just, it's elevating it without, exact, without having to identify exactly what it is. And that's the, the point. It stays in the background. So this is all stuff so far. I mean, you, you probably don't have a freeze dryer at home. But no. this is something that you can get at, at like a health food store or a trail mix store or something like that, you, right? You, you, we buy freeze dried corn. When, when, when our freeze dryer was down, we bought freeze dried corn from Whole Foods. And it was you know, just as delicious because they, they freeze dry from, from, right from the farm. So you get the, 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 it's exactly what you want. So the, the, the starch hasn't, I mean, the sugars haven't had time to transform into starches. So you just have really beautiful sweet well, corn. Yeah, because corn breaks down the moment you, the moment you the pull, moment it, off you the pull stock, it off. It's, 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 it's starch, starch, yeah, exactly. Um, it starts so, degrading. And then this stuff, you can, you can get tapioca malt dextrin from like Modern's Pantry or Amazon or uh, any places. Yeah, uh, Chef Rubber. They, okay. they, and they sell that in small packages. It's very reasonable now. So that, you know, you can play at home very easily. This Fantastic. Is, and all you need is a whisk. I mean, you I love this. Just whisk in some butter and that's it. And then for a little bit of whimsy, we, 
we uh, have some some ash, so we just collected some ash from some of our, our barbecue. So you just went in the, into the into the charbroil get, get, and get some really good ash. We use some. Good, why not? And uh, so you want because you want that roasted flavor of the corn and some more uh, uh, corn powder, some cilantro stem, koti hachis, and uh, some nice spicy aioli. Excellent. Well, let's get started. I want to. I want to see All this. Right. So, quite simply, we always do our two little dots. Um, how spicy do you like it? I like spicy. Good. I, I've never met food I didn't like though. <laughs> Easy customer. Although. Well, never like had met good food I didn't like. Ah, that's say. that's that's. So we put yeah, just a little bit, little two little dots. Um. Okay. And. Do one. I don't know if you want to help me with this one. About the same amount. Yeah, about the same amount. And if you start from here, I can start oh, putting the, the butter okay. powder. Uh, I'll, I'll switch with you. Okay, sure. So I'm putting the, yeah, just enough butter powder down. It looks like a lot, but it, it will it will disappear. That's going to hit your tongue and, and it, just kind of it, dissolve, it, exactly. right? Exactly. And then we're going to do, um, just because we like spicy, I like to just always put one last dot. So you get some on, on the end of your palate. And what's great about this is it's just such a small bite, but we try to layer it so you get so much of the flavors in different sequences. Actually, if you, if you want to do the acid coming okay. from, from that side, it's just a, just a okay. little sprinkling like I just did, because that stuff is potent. And you did the two outside edges already, right? Yeah, I just did do that, exactly. This is, this is real delicate work here, and I can't see it going off at all. <laughs> it's not going off yet. Perfect. Good. Yeah, yeah, just a little bit. Now I'm going to do the ash so it gets a nice Looks like you've got your roasted corn. Looks like pepper. <laughs> right. Very smoky pepper. Then we put... Now the cilantro and the cotilla both have uh, moisture well, in exactly. them. Exactly. So, so you have to do right, this right before you put them on the... On the right before we out. serve it. And sometimes we'll have, uh, in season, we'll have some really nice cilantro blossoms, so they're mm. a little drier, but they have that really like beautiful grassy, just love cilantro blossoms. A little bit more of the corn powder. Okay. So you'll get that, again, we're trying to layer it, so you'll get that sweetness with the spice on the first, then you'll get the richness, and you'll get the herbal, and... And is this something you should just put, put yeah, get just the whole guy in your mouth bite, at once? One bite. A little bit of patika. And voila. So these, nice, this will. There's a trick, you, you can't breathe too close to this stuff, otherwise it <laughs> ends up everywhere. And voila. Fantastic. That is how it would be served at the dinner. Beautiful. All right, are you ready for I, I, the I, I modernist can't wait. elote? I can't wait All for right. the elote. Beautiful. And it's surprising that much mass, just wow. kind of vol that much volume, this just kind of dis just, like, mm. dissolves them. Oh, that's wonderful. You just get the little tiny hint of cilantro right right as, as you get mm -hmm. to the finish. And the spicy at the beginning, that is absolutely fantastic. Um, we have three more here, guys. I don't want to alarm you all, but... Um, <laughs> we need to feed... Come on in. We need to feed everybody. Let's, uh, uh that, that is... It's fun. You oh, know, that's so, so... I need the spicy at the yeah, end. The spicy, the oh, herbal, the... It's like uh, the 30 seconds of, of flavor yeah, in there. Yeah. Um, we're going to roll over to the next station yep, yep. and uh, make the next dish. So, exactly. you know, don't go anywhere. Centrifuge pizza. So, Max... Yes. Sir. This looks like a giant washing machine. It does. That's what I thought it was when I the first time I saw it. Okay. Was, yeah, in Nathan's house. But it's kind of an expensive washing machine, I guess. A little bit expensive, and I think far more interesting. Okay. And so it's a, it's a high speed centrifuge. Uh, it allows us to spin foods up to thirty five thousand g's, sometimes forty thousand g's, depending on the rotor. And what that does is separate food by density. Okay. So, so yeah, oils, starches, whatever, all get all the particles, all the different like yeah, hmm. exactly, all the the composition of the uh, of of whatever ingredient we're spinning becomes apparent to us in these little strats, and so it's fascinating because you discover new ingredients within, you know, well peas stuff that wouldn't normally be accessible. There's no other way you can you can extract the layers. Uh, uh, without this machine. So when you guys got this in, I'm sure you went through a period where you just put everything that you could imagine into the centrifuge. Everything, centrifuge. literally everything. Whether it was fresh ingredients, I mean like just whole foods, juices, purees, ketchup <laughs> to find out what, you know, what really is in ketchup. You know, and we, yeah, any sauce you can imagine. Uh, 
And we found that, that the most interesting ingredients that you, we put in here are starchy ingredients like peas, uh, corn, bananas, mangoes, that uh, yield, always, always yield pretty th uh, three really interesting layers. Okay. Which, is, which I'm going to show you right now. Oh, fantastic. So, uh, that looks uh, very green. It's very green. It's, it's, these are frozen peas. Okay. Now, frozen peas, uh, as with corn, I mean, uh, peas as with corn, as soon as they're picked, the natural sugars turn into starch very quickly. So uh, we like frozen peas for this because we don't care about the texture, we're pureeing it. But it's so sweet because they were, they were frozen liquid nitrogen they on the farm. Drop them right into the bucket yeah. from the plant. Exactly. Okay. So, they, so, they, so these are, 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 are sweeter and fresher than most, most fresh peas that you'll get unless you go right to your farmer's market with a guy who just picked it. And so um, you know, we, we always use really good organic frozen peas. Pureed, that's it. Okay, so you put them in the blender and, in the blender. and let them rip. Yeah, we just we thaw them and puree them. That's this all we did. This is seems this really is simple. Extremely simple. Except for the centrifuge, Except for, of course. Well, the, have, yeah, you have to have this piece of equipment, which this is the big boy, but you can have uh, uh, countertop ones that, that will spin it at a lower uh, G force, but can still, uh, over a little bit more time, uh, okay. create the same. So we put this guy in. Okay. We're going to put the lid on, seal it. How fast does this Close spin? It. This can go up to 40,000 Gs. In this particular instance, we're going to spin it at only 27,000 Gs. Oh, that's it? Yeah. Okay. That's, you know. I can do that on my it's, bicycle. It's I'm enough, yeah. Sure. Right. <laughs> <Get it> very quickly. <laughs> you got to have a real height. Or, or with a salad spinner and just run really fast with the, exactly. with the cord, you know? Exactly. Uh, so, yeah, uh, for about an hour, we're gonna, you know, we have it at 10,000 RPM, which means for this machine. Um, okay, that's, that's your G calculation. Start it. So now uh, it's been spun for an hour. The peas are, are done. The peas are done. And we're going to discover what happens I, during I this process. I can't wait to see this. That's amazing. So, OK, so we have three layers here. I assume the bottom one is the starch. That's right. The middle one is fat, probably? Well, normally fat would rise. Like, if it was pure oil, it would rise to the top. Of. OK. So this is what we're still analyzing, this substance. Oh. It, this is, so we, 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 we do call it butter, Okay. It's pea butter. Uh, but it's a composition of, of uh, residual cellulose and pectin, and and there and there's, oh, so it's there's still from the skin of the peas. There's definitely the... some fat. There's definitely some fat in there because it has a texture of butter. Mm -hmm. um, and then the top is the pea, pea juice. The, the, the juice, pea juice. Okay, fantastic! And I love pea juice. Pea juice is great. Who doesn't love pea juice? Johnny, Johnny actually drinks pea juice for breakfast. That's <laughs> breakfast what, I mean, when we have extra. He just like <laughs> that's his. <laughs> this is it. It's, it's like wheatgrass juice, but uh, you know more but, concentrated. But delicious, also. You know, it's like yeah, it's. Uh, and you use that in cocktails and stuff too, right? We've done cocktails. We use it mostly. I love to use it as a broth for, for which is the way I'll serve it to you right now. A broth for really, you know, whatever vegetables. So we'll use it during winter because we're using frozen peas. Oh, you so it's it like an ephemeral thing. So we'll do a roasted vegetables with the pea juice, and if it's spring, we'll get all the, the little the little peas and, and radishes and turnips and all that. Uh, autumn, we'll get the mushrooms, you know. So, it, but it, it always enhances the the, the na this beautiful bowl of vegetables that we serve them because it's sweet. Because we've removed the starch, and starch is a flavor inhibitor, it coats your, your palate, uh, uh, prevents you from recognizing a lot of the, the more subtle layers uh, and, and uh, aromas. We have this pea juice, which is so bright, so sweet, so nuanced. And, and all we have to do is just bring it to a simmer and salt it. That's it. Fantastic. Let's go try this out. Let's do it. Let's go cook. We've seen the centrifuge. We have the pea butter and the pea juice. We have all the components. Now we, we're going to assemble it in this beautiful spring pea stew. I, I love the idea of a pea stew. So explain what, what's, what are we, what's happening next. So I'm actually going to grab a few. This is some, a little mixture of all of our, our best vegetables right now. You have some uh, white corn, little cauliflower, turnips, pea vines, mm. um, some uh, uh, little, uh, yeah, little fresh peas that have been peeled by hand. So, Wow. We don't want the skin on the peas. Who, who, I, I'm not going <laughs> to ask who peels the peas by hand. Angina has become quite the master of, of oh. pea peeling. Oh, very good. So we just, you know, just arrange it delicately uh, on one side of the bowl because we're going to add some uh, sheep milk ricotta. Oh, okay. So each plate as well. That adds some freshness. And, and I I'm, you know, we're so lucky here with the farmer's markets in Seattle. You just get the, the best of the best from, from each farmer. Walk around. Right now you get these turnips that are just like little. Oh, I lo little love the baby things. turnips. And they're, you know, the, the little hints of bitterness, but just, just enough. Um, and because the peas, are, the, the peas themselves and the pea juice are so sweet, uh, you want that, uh, you know, a lot of that savory component, the mushroom, the, the turnip, the radish. Uh, 
in autumn, you know, we do a lot more cauliflower and, and, and uh, porcini. So it's seasonal based on what, what, what you can get that's awesome exactly, at the time. Exactly, exactly. And this, this, there's nothing, aside from the peeled peas, there's nothing particularly no. unusual about no, this, so far. This is absolutely, this is just, you know, perfect vegetables uh, cut into, you know, even sized pieces. Okay. And then arranged as and sauteed? artfully. Yeah, we just, just, just sweat it down with a little bit of butter. Okay. And then we make a little mound because we're gonna put some pea butter in, like on top oh. of the ricotta. So this is we make our own ricotta. Um, that's something that we ha we did, we made an MC. It's so easy to do. You, you heat the it's milk. Good, and heat the milk with some either ascorbic acid or citric acid. Let it separate, and then you just drain it, drain the whey out, and that's it. And if you want to enrich it, you can always add a little bit of cream, a little bit of mascarpone. Okay. Mascarpone. And then, so yeah, so this is where the pea butter comes in. So we did spin, I and mean, when you think about the yield on this guy, you know, it's about two to three percent total. Yeah, it's. I mean, just in case you can't see it, it's the line from my between my two thumbs. <laughs> it's a very little pea butter. So we have a full that bag of, of gold. You know, really, really weeks of pea butter in there. <laughs> and we'll pipe a little bit extra in here, and we're gonna also pipe some more on the toast. Okay. So you get, you know, you get to. It's it's great to be able to just taste little independent. Uh, components and then put it all together, get all the textures. And we also have right now some. I love oh. these. They just I mean, you can't believe that nature. And why why are they created strange? this? They just it, it's just that the, the Choja variety. Um, it's just this beautiful. And, and these are plant. beets. These are beets. Correct. Okay. Just candy striped beets, and dressed in a very good olive oil. And we want a little bit of crunch on the top of the of the, of the uh, stew. So okay. we do usually we do beets. Uh, radishes, we have some really nice uh, breakfast radishes right now. Pink radishes. Now you slice these incredibly thin. Are you are yeah, these going on a microtome or? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just on a mandolin. Very careful mandolin. And I love pressing it onto the oh. pea butter so you get that transparency. That's amazing. One thing is we, 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 do, we do do a lot of preserving, simple preser preserving, because we get so many great ingredients from here in California. And we have uh, Meyer lemons. So, mm -hmm. so for the whole year, we have pickled Meyer lemons. And we either use as whole slices or uh, minced and vinaigrettes. The brine from it is incredible. So I'm going to dress these veggies with a little bit of the brine and the minced. Uh, oh, fantastic! Pickled Meyer lemons. That's the stuff right here, and you can just smell the perfume from the Meyer lemon. It has oh, that, wow. that clementine-like aroma because it is a, a little hybrid of with, with clementines. And because again, the, the 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 peas are so sweet, you want you want this burst of acidity. You want the creaminess from the ricotta and the the uh, the pea butter, and then little pea tendrils that have been carefully snipped by some of our lovely <laughs> stagiaires. So now you have pretty much the plates are set to go. Oh, this looks lovely, Max. We're gonna make our little toast. So. So one of the things that surprised me about the MC Kitchen yeah. is that you don't have a ton of open flame here. No uh, flame. Your induction, no In, flame at all. Induction, we don't have a gas. We don't have a gas system. We, we don't want one. Gas is very sexy, but it's also it's it's very, it uses a lot. It's uh, not energy efficient, mm -hmm. um, and uh, so we decided to go with only induction. And we have all of our uh, combi ovens and CVAPs. Mm -hmm. So it's a very uh, clean kitchen. Uh, green. Uh, green kitchen. Yeah, very very green kitchen. You know. So when you're trying to figure out what the what the components of the pea butter are, yeah, do you like if you run it through the molecular spectrometer? No, or? no actually, no, we haven't had, we haven't had time. We've been so busy, but now we have, we're going to have a staff scientist and oh cool, and uh, we're going to be doing a lot of that. I, I, we're so curious about exactly because there are some lipids in peas, but it's, it, it can't be pure lipids. So um, how it's you know how it has that texture, but has been kept. Um, in the center, instead, yeah. of, instead of rising to the surface of the, the bottle, is is pretty interesting. And then here we have the juice. Ah, uh, so this is the this is the pea juice from the top of the center yep. of the centrifuge jar. Right. You've heated it, salted it a little bit. You said just salt, just salt. You have all your components. So. Always oh, just a little bit of salt on the because the, the butter is rich, but it's not seasoned. Okay. And this is on, on this amazing walnut bread from a Tall Grass Bakery, which is very subtle. The last step is just pouring the broth over, and you don't want to pour it right onto the ricotta because you want the ricotta to stay where it is, and then you can mix Aww. it in as you want. So you just look at that color. That's amazing. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna taste. 
Where should I start? Should I go for the ricotta? I would, should I, I go? Would just try the broth by itself first. Okay. Try a little bit of the veggies with the broth, and then you can start mixing. And and you have don't forget your toast. You'll want to. Oh, that is good. amazing. That is the strongest pea flavor I think I've ever tasted. <laughs> right up until the moment I taste the the toast, I'm gonna toast. go in for the toast. So that's a, it's delicate. So it loves to break in your fingers, and that's kind of the fun of it. Is can you keep it in, its integrity until it gets to your mouth? It's just the, oh. that. that you know, and so you have a little bit of that with the, some broth so that coats your palate with that richness. So. Oh, the toast, the, starting with the crunch of the toast, yeah, yeah. The, the, the pea, I, I feel like the entire inside of my mouth tastes like peas right now. Yep. And just a little little tiny hint of salt on the top. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's fantastic. Uh, I'm gonna go back in for more soup. Uh, hold uh, a little bit of the veggies. Yeah, a little bit of the veggies. And trying to get a nice even. Uh, yeah, a little balance of the, a little bit of the onions. And there the we corn. go. That's a good, that's a good one. Bites on. Oh. So. Yeah, all veggies, we just, just mm. cook it on minute. So. Mm. so, I mean, that, that it's, just, it's just lovely, fresh vegetable flavors. <laughs> and, and, with, and But still the overarching sense of pea. The pea is that, very, right. is the forefront of the, of, the, of the bite. It's the dominant one, uh, dominant flavor. And then when you add the, the, the sheets more ricotta, you, you, you get a little bit more balance of the, like, get a little bit more richness and mouthfeel. I'll be honest, right now I really just want to lick the pea butter <laughs> off of the toast. Um, by, by all means, we've had people do, do various interpretations of how they like to eat this. And, you, you could wipe out the entire pea crop of the, of the, of the United States. Okay, so last one. Mm. Mm. Oh, the cheese is lovely. And it, it kind of it, it does an initial blast of flavor and then kind of gets out of the way. So you get vegetables and... and it, it, kind of, it kind of tones it down a little bit and then you yeah. actually get a little more layers. So yeah, if you get... Yeah. I'm going to go in for some of the greens yeah, and all that. This is, this is fantastic. Can I serve, can I serve for you? Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, thank you so much, Max. Uh, so yeah. this will do it for us for today's video. We'll be back tomorrow with more from the Modest Cuisine Kitchens. I'm going to eat pea butter until they kick us out for now. <laughs> uh, we'll see you guys later. Bye.